Hello there and welcome to the Bicycle Diaries and welcome to Estonia. To give you some idea of where I am, I'm in the capital of Estonia, a city called Tallinn. Now, Estonia was one of these old Soviet republics and it was the first to gain independence in 1991. Uh, we're 200 kilometers west of the Russian border and we are about 200 kilometers north of the border with Latvia, uh, but we're on the coast, so just 80 kilometers across the water is the Finnish city of Helsinki. Tomorrow I put myself uh, on a bike tour, so heaven only knows where that will go. I visited many of the states of the former Soviet Union and I have to admit from what I've seen Latvia is incredibly modern. Um, okay yes there are some sort of remnants of the old Soviet buildings still around as you would expect um, and yes the old town is very medieval and very beautiful but the new town is very very modern indeed in fact I think it was only built in the last 20 years or so and as such it would put places like London and New York to shame. To give you some idea of the industry here it's all very much kind of high-tech and internet related. In fact Skype was invented here and Latvia was the first country in the world to conduct a general election using online votes. So here I am, heading for the bike shop. Let's see where this ride takes us. Although I knew I was coming to Tallinn a few weeks ago, I only booked up my ride yesterday with a company called City Bike, as I thought I wasn't going to have enough time to fit one in. Luckily for me, they're also located in the old town, not too far from my hotel. As well as the international language of bike, Everyone speaks pretty good English, so it's not long before I have my bike for the morning. As you can see, it's a typical city bike, although my first thought is that it's a women's specific model due to the down tube, but I was reliably assured that it wasn't. Our ride is only going to take a couple of hours, so it's not going to be anything too strenuous. Our initial route takes us out of the old town and into the busy port area. Most visitors arrive in Tallinn by ship, either by ferry from Finland or by cruise ship from places like Russia, Germany and the UK, making it one of the busiest passenger ports in Europe. As you will notice, I'm not wearing a helmet. Normally, I would never consider riding without one, but as today's ride is going to be fairly leisurely, I thought I would do without. So having just ridden through the city, we're now in the more leafy suburbs. One of the curious things about riding here is that um, we are allowed to ride on the pavement. Um, is a bit disconcerting but maybe it's a Baltic thing uh, it was the same thing last year in Latvia but now we're in the suburbs hopefully we can stick to the roads a bit more we feel a lot more comfortable on those Like we're riding into some palace now. Turns out that this is actually the summer palace of the Russian Emperor Peter the Great, um, but he never actually slept in this building. He had a separate smaller one out the back so he didn't raise too much attention to himself. 
I'm now climbing the second of Tallinn's two hills. As you can see, it's only a small rise in the road and nothing to get too excited about. At the top of the climb is the President's Palace. Estonia feels like a pretty laid back place. Here we are right outside the palace itself, just a few meters from the front door. This would be like riding completely uninvited into Downing Street in London or onto the lawn of the White House. Here in Tallinn, the two guards on the door seem completely unfazed. Could you imagine that happening in London or Washington? We leave the president to her duties and ride through the ornamental gardens of Caderig Park on the edge of the city and head out through some residential streets towards the Tallinn Song Festival Ground. Singing plays a very big role in Estonian culture. Not only do they enjoy it, it also played a major part in the country gaining independence from the Soviet Union in 1991 through the non-violent uprising known as the Singing Revolution. Incidentally, the festival ground also has Estonia's highest point, which is only about 30 metres above sea level. I'm now heading out to the coast. This area is currently being developed and is due to be completed in the next few years. 80 kilometers or 50 miles across the water is Finland and during the Soviet occupation of Estonia many people attempted the three-day walk across the frozen sea to freedom. Sadly the majority didn't make it due to the extreme cold. A few hundred metres or so further on, we pass the Mermaid Monument, which commemorates a Russian boat which sank in the Gulf of Finland in the 19th century. This is now a place where many of Tallinn's young ethnic Russian couples come to declare their love for each other by placing padlocks on the chains of the monument and then throwing the key into the sea. Heading back towards the city, we reach the Rotterman Quarter, an old industrial area which has recently been converted into trendy shopping and dining areas. To my surprise, instead of getting off and walking, we're riding through this rather busy area. Unfortunately, I have no choice but to follow, as I don't want to lose contact with the group. Fortunately though, everyone seems pretty easygoing about us cycling through. After a somewhat stressful ride through the shopping centre, we're back onto the cobbled streets of the old town. Up until about 40 years ago, this area was in a relatively poor state of repair, but in 1980, the Russians renovated it in time for the Olympics. Even though the main games were taking place in Moscow, some 900 kilometres or 540 miles away, all of the sailing events were taking place here, and they wanted to present a positive, if perhaps not entirely accurate image of what life was like in the Soviet Union. So that's my ride around Tallinn, done and dusted. It was only uh, about 12 kilometres, but it took us about two and a half hours to complete, but that was mainly because we were stopping quite a lot and looking at stuff. All in all, very enjoyable ride, um, not strenuous at all. There was one hill that was probably only about um, 100 metres long with a gradient of about 2% and I think that's about as bad as it gets here in Estonia. It's quite a flat country. Um, yeah, quite an enjoyable ride. A little um, uh, intimidating riding through the shopping centre like that uh, and then not knowing the roads, but uh, all in all, yes. Uh, I'm glad I did it. Although a fun, interesting ride, I would say that it wasn't a particularly strenuous workout. In fact, I think I barely broke sweat. You can do bike tours like this in pretty much any city around the world, and they're a great way of seeing the sights and learning a few interesting facts about where you are. 
I think next time I would like to be able to go out and do a proper ride, but that is going to take a bit more planning. Thanks for watching.